Why did you decide to adapt Peter Curry's novel? Because uh, it was offered me, offered to me, and and I suddenly realised, oh my god, this is a masterpiece. After reading it probably for the second time, uh, and I was in a really different headspace to when I first read it, and uh, really missing home. I'd been living in London for four or five years, and I thought, wow, this is such a different perspective on a very famous story in Australia. Um, that that I. It, it, it held its own. It didn't feel like a repeat. It didn't feel like we were going over covered ground. It really did feel like a very authored, extraordinary piece of writing from, you know, a great writer. Thank you. Um, and what was your starting point for the project, if you can speak in terms of uh, aesthetics and mood? Um, it was to try to make it timeless. And we took a lot of photographs of landscape that really inspired us in Australia. So we sort of knew where we were going to film it. But it was about trying to create a really timeless, I don't know, punk energy to it. You know, we, we, we saw pictures of the Kelly gang from the 1870s and they were really similar to sort of band shots in the 70s in Australia. And there seemed to be a kind of energy and a kind of tonal kind of world there between the two that um, I really recognised and thought was familiar. So it was try to not make it a kind of pastiche. It was to try to kind of layer it with characters and and a world that didn't feel too far uh, away from, from today. Okay. You have a really incredible cast for this film. Yeah. Um, and one of the most uh, talked about actors at the moment, John, George McKay, yeah. uh, as well as Russell Crowe yeah. and uh, Nicholas uh, Holt. How was it working with them? And uh, why did you cast so many British uh, actors, including your lead? Uh, well, George was half Australian, so I'm gonna like claim him as Australian. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 you know, there were English roles in it that that we needed to kind of feel, and we were really feel, and we were really lucky that Nick Holt and Charlie Hunnam kind of came on board to play those sort of antagonist kind of characters. Um, but but with George, he he just did the best audition. You know, he was and he was so right. There was something I, I really wanted Ned to be very sophisticated at the beginning of the film. Like wanted wanted him to be someone that you could imagine another life for, um, and that at the end you kind of grieved a little that that he'd end up sort of having to become kind of what he was running away from. So yeah, George was 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 um, just really kind of ready for something like this, and um, you know just did the best audition. Yeah. Um, your brother scored the film a uh, very tense and eerie school. Yeah. Um, how did you find it, you two working together? You know, he gets to say stuff to me that he probably wouldn't say to other directors, <laughs> and I get to say the same to him that I probably would never dare say to a composer. So there's something quite nice in just um, having that free-flowing, easy kind of creative conversation. I mean, I'm really lucky to have a creative relationship with a brother, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I know it's really kind of unusual, but yeah, we've done everything together, so it's pretty, pretty free flowing. Yeah. Um, I've just heard that uh, Shantaram's production, Apple TV Plus uh, new series, um, is on hold. I understand that you shot the first two episodes yeah, already. Yeah, we shot the um, first two episodes last year, and we just sort of finished editing them. And will they be kept? What, what yeah, the yeah, plan? yeah, I, th I think they're sort of, they're looking at the moment at, um, uh, you know, finding, you know, uh, getting help with another showrunner to kind of write the other scripts. So, yeah, no, I'm, I imagine it'll, um, it'll keep going, yeah. Excellent. Well, I look forward to it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, your film is very, uh, it's a very famous Australian story. Yeah. Um, and the world's first ever narrative feature film was uh, The Story of the Kelly Gang. Um, how is it received and what's the uh, present state of the Australian film industry? Well, it's it's been it's been really mixed. Like there are those that kind of like, how dare you kind of take our Ned Kelly and put him in a dress and oh. where's his beard and and uh, change up the story and you know. And then there's been others that are really excited by a reinterpretation of him. So I, so. I always knew it was going to be a provocative film in that sense. Um, you know, and it's quite bold and in the way it's sort of in its stylization and stuff. So. Um, yeah, so it's 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 been a very loud response uh, back home. Yeah, in a good way. It's kind Excellent. of yeah. And what was the other question? Um, and what what's the present state of the Australian film industry? Uh, good, I think. Yeah, yeah. With the, like you know, there's some really interesting directors coming through, and there's so many Australian directors that are doing really interesting international stuff at the moment. So you know, it seems to be in a in a good state. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah.